Good evening. Hello. It's Tuesday the 21st of May 2013. Where's it going? It's just flown by. Last week just flew by for me uh, or drove by um, because uh, I was back up in the land of the Scot as you will see a little bit later on. Uh, and we've got some little newsy bits coming at you and uh, got an update on the swath total, a bit of swath video and um, a juicy juicy. And all that, all that, is on Vaporscene. Vaporscene is proudly sponsored by Health e Vape, UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and e-liquid. Yes, indeed, it's me. I'm back again. It's Tuesday and it is Vapor Scene. Uh, and uh, just look at my Skype chat then. Got distracted. <laughs> uh, all sorts of uh, bits and pieces in the news um, this week. Uh, and if you're watching the pre live just a few minutes ago, really, you'd have seen a little clip that I uh, showed out from uh, Jonathan Ross's show this week with Carla Bruni um, using an e cig in the green room. And um, Yes, there are the pictures to prove it. Uh, and uh, yes, it was uh, rather interesting. She said it was mist and not nicotine. Um, so whether or not she was using a clearomizer with zero nick, who knows? Um, but uh, yes, rather interesting. Uh, and then Lee Evans was mucking about behind uh, Jonathan Ross's desk and uh, pulled out an ashtray with a cigarette in it and was blowing around. So what that was doing there, who knows? Who knows? But I can't show that bit because I haven't got that bit. But there you go. What else has been happening in the news e-cig wise? Well, if you look at this piece of journalism, and I use that word loosely, um, this appeared in the Mail Online in female. Uh, and uh, if you see there, a young girl was a 14 year old was followed by her uh, mother followed by her mother uh, and uh, she was using an e-cig. Um, but it gets worse than that because the, the, of the just rubbish that's written in this article, um, followed by this little bit, uh, that critics point the finger at the fact that devices have no age restrictions on them, on who can buy them, really? Uh, and are available in flavors such as strawberry and chocolate. Yes, they are. Um, they warn that they are likely to appeal to children in much the same way as Algapops do. Really? Oh my God. The only saving grace in that article was uh, a quote from Catherine, which uh, was there. E-cigarettes allow people to switch to a different way of taking nicotine, which is a far safer way than continuing to smoke. <sighs> what is it with that particular publication and um, putting out stories such as that? Who knows? If you want the, uh, the full story, Google it, have a look, uh, make sure you've got a strong cup of something or a strong something uh, with some 45 in your, uh, <laughs> in your device uh, because it is crazy. Um, but yes, that's one, one little thing coming out and we've got some more stuff from Europe. What's the one from Europe? Yes, here we go. Olive oil. They're trying to ban, or they are going to ban as of January the 1st, um, restaurants using reusable olive oil bottles stroke jugs. <sighs> I've got another section on that somewhere, but I don't know where it is. Um, yes, so when you go to a restaurant as of the 1st of January, you will, you will no longer see a uh, kind of reusable bottle or a jug. You will have to see a, a bottle that can be identified that it hasn't been tampered with, and it is what it says in the bottle. Um, I don't know about you, but when I use a well-known sauce bottle at uh, you know, a restaurant, do I consider that it possibly might contain ketchup from Cash and Carry? I do consider it. Am I bothered? Not particularly. So, uh, there you go. 
Anyway, <laughs> talking about Europe, what's happening with the SWAF campaign? Well, have a look at this because five days to go and the total is currently standing at £19,189 and I'm just going to double check that on the actual web as I'm talking and it uh, hasn't changed since I did that slide so that's all good. So it's going to be uh, finishing going to be finishing during Dave's show on Sunday. Uh, will we get to the 20,000 I wonder? Hmm, who knows? But there has been so much uh, coming out of the campaign so far. Some excellent bits of VT. Uh, and I know Dave showed you Rebecca Taylor's VT last week. Um, but here is another, yes, another MEP from Yorkshire and the Humber who is uh, in favour of E6. Um, a different point of view slightly on Europe because this is Godfrey Bloom who is from UKIP. Have a little look. My name is Godfrey Bloom, uh, UK Independence Party, uh, member of the European Parliament for Yorkshire and North Lincolnshire, and I sit on the Economic and Monetary Affairs Committee. Well, I first came across electronic cigarettes about three years ago when they were demonstrating them at King's Cross Station, uh, and I had a look at them and uh, I thought what an absolutely astonishing innovation that was. I don't believe that electronic cigarettes need any regulation at all. Uh, I believe uh, people should be able to smoke electronic cigarettes or any sort of cigarette if they so choose. UKIP are totally hostile to the ban on electronic cigarettes and indeed we're hostile to any sort of cigarette ban. We believe that in a free society, if you want to smoke, for example, in a pub, you want to have a cigarette with your pint, that should be between you and the landlord of the pub, not a politician, as we all know, very few of whom ever go into pubs and meet real people. Well, I've heard from plenty of my constituents, uh, it's quite a big post bag that I have about this uh, supposed ban uh, and this uh, regulatory procedure coming from Brussels. Uh, so yes, it's actually running quite big at the moment uh, in my constituency. The European Union is interested only in power, power over every aspect of our lives. And I think that's a very sad thing. Of course, very often it's driven by money, but the goal is power. There are 10,000 lobbyists in Brussels. There's huge money at stake here. Pharmaceuticals want to control electronic cigarettes. Uh, and of course, if it's a substitute for ordinary tobacco uh, and ordinary cigarettes, uh, that's going to damage the international cigarette market. So there's big vested interest here. This is about big money, lobbying and influence and power. That's what it's all about, not health and safety. Free bloom there from UKIP, uh, and you can see the quality of of the stuff that's coming out from the SWAF campaign is absolutely fantastic. And isn't it strange that Rebecca Taylor's video uh, that Dave showed last week um, in favour of e-cigs uh, wants to stay in Europe? Um, then you've got UKIP who are in favour of e-cigs. In fact, in favour of anything that we really want, um, but want out of Europe. Um, and then you've got the rapporteur, Mrs. McCavin, who is also from Yorkshire and the Humber. Uh, and uh, is her position changing? Hmm, we'll have to find out. I know there's going to be more news on that this week. Um, but I'm still waiting, by the way. And if you're watching, Mrs. McCavin, I've been waiting now since the 2nd of May for a response to my request for a meeting with you. Uh, I got an automated response from your website saying thank you for your email uh, and that was on the 3rd of May. It's now the 21st and I've heard not a dicky bird since. It would be nice to actually get some kind of reply, um, even if it's from an aide saying, well, Mrs McCavin's quite busy at the moment, but she'll be in contact shortly. Um, no, nothing. Nothing from Mrs McCavin at all. <sighs> they work for us. How do they? Yes. Um, I would like to find out, actually, it'd be interesting to see how much money this whole thing has cost. 
uh, the European Union, all the meetings uh, and the thrashing about to get something not passed. Um, it would be interesting to find out, wouldn't it, how much money has gone down the drain uh, when they could have been spending it on something useful, maybe like banning reusable bottles of foot olive oil. <laughs> oh dear, sometimes I wonder. Anyway, um, so last week, also in the news last week, it was the, uh, the 70th anniversary of the Dam Busters raid um, from World War II. And I was driving home, as I do quite often from Scotland, doing my little vapour trails, uh, and I thought I'd just do a little piece on that. So um, here it is, it's not very long. Today is the 17th of May. 2013 and it is 70 years ago today that the Dambusters had their big bombing campaign to destroy the dams over in Germany and I'm listening to the radio as I as I do I, I like radio too uh, and uh, I've been listening away today and obviously there's a big a big thing today that it is 70 years ago uh, and you have to admire the sheer tenacity of the RAF uh, during World War II uh, and the imagination of Barnes Wallace to develop the weapon, the bouncing bomb, that did the damage to the then Germany's infrastructure uh, and destroyed two dams and damaged one, um, which took five and a half months to repair. And it's something like, in today's money, the cost of five billion pounds to uh, rebuild those dams. And it took so much in the way of manpower uh, and money out of the war effort for Germany, which ultimately helped uh, help them lose the war in World War II. Nineteen Lancaster bombers flew out from the UK at midnight on the 16th of May uh, and 11 made it back on the 17th of May and of the airmen that flew out 53 lost their lives uh, either crashing uh, in the channel or being shot down uh, or um, actually one of the bombs killed them because they, uh, they, they dropped it and it bounced back and took them out. But the bigger picture, I guess, and we can't forget the bigger picture, is that over 1,700 civilians, prisoners of war and German personnel lost their lives as well. And it kind of think you kind of think it's war is so futile. If you think about all those people that have needlessly died because of some bloke who wanted to take over the world, um, it just kind of it puts everything else into perspective, doesn't it? It puts little troubles into perspective. So it's a shame that that there are still so many conflicts all over the world that are costing innocent people their lives. So, just a little thought there. Hmm, yes, I was, I was feeling a bit poignant on Friday. <laughs> and it's true, there's, there's so many, so many conflicts still all over the world and it's, uh, it's a pretty shocking place we live in, isn't it, sometimes? Uh, and I've got to say, you know, thoughts go out to the people over in Oklahoma um, who have suffered dreadfully yesterday with that uh, ridiculous tornado two miles two miles wide and 200 miles an hour um, and it's um, taken a few lives and caused just absolute devastation so if you're ever in America uh, thoughts go out to you over there um, so let's move on let's get a bit a, a bit a bit more upbeat a bit lighter um, and if you have been sending any photos in recently then um, it might well be here so let's move on with this week's Show Us Yours gallery. And now it's time for Show Us Yours.
Sponsored by Flavor Art UK. Show is yours. Sponsored by Flavor Art UK. Yes, indeed, that was this week's Show is Yours Gallery. And I will tell you who has won after this break. Vapocene is proudly sponsored by Health Eva, UK purveyor of e cigarettes and e liquid. in Yorkshire for your ECG needs. That's iVeber.co.uk and iVeber-elixir.co.uk. iVeber and iVeber-elixir.co.uk proud sponsors of VeberTrails.tv.
now it's back to Vapor Scene on Vapor Trails TV. Vapor Scene is proudly sponsored by Health e Vapor, the UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and e-liquid. And we're back. <laughs> I was a bit late going into those ads. Um, I should have gone into them a little bit sooner than I did, but I was blethering. Oh dear. Uh, anyway, going back to show is yours. If you want to send a picture, you know what to do. Vapor scene at vaportrails.tv. And this week's winner did just that. And this week's winner is Mark Hughes. Uh, there you go. That's his picture there. And I believe that was made by his friend Pete. Uh, and he is known as Funky Bunch on the forums. So congratulations, Mark. I will be in contact with you after the show and tell you how you get your bottle of juice. Oh, there you are. Uh, more of the same next week with a different winner, obviously. Uh, <laughs> oh dear, it's all, going, it's all going on today. Anyway, talking about juice, here is our very own Mr. Gary Dibley with this week's Juicy Juicy. Juicy, 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 juicy. Hello, tis me again, and um, I'm I'm sort of doing another another juice review. Um, been in the garden today. It's been sunny, really warm. Um, what am I going to do? I'm going to have a look at uh, something a bit new to me. I I don't normally do fruity, um, but I thought, seeing as I had the pink t-shirt on I might as well give it a blast um, so I had a an order come through and uh, it was for some of my favorite juice anyway uh, is the vermilion river as I probably said before um, but this one is the uh, I don't know if see that the Hawaiian pineapple now I've tried the pina colada type one I don't know what it's called but it, it's sort of like that flavor um, before and, and thought it was nice um, but it wasn't wasn't sort of an all-day all-day vape for me uh, so I thought this one might be a little bit interesting to have a look at now <clears throat> I've topped up my tank um, and this is the first go on this one so I don't know whether it's worth putting a, a tank full in but we'll give it a go Produces a nice amount of vapor. Interesting. Whereas, whereas the pina colada one sort of had, if you like, to me a, it was, it was very much like the, um, well, the cocktail. This one uh, is is very much like a um, pineapple cube. Um, you know the little sweetie pineapple cube things. Um, now I don't know whether that's unpleasant or not. It's an interesting one. It, it, like I say, it's more of a more of a sweetie pineapple than a pineapple pineapple, um, if you know what I mean. Um, it, it, it almost has a little sugar coating on it. Um, is it damn good? I'm not sure. It's probably one that, that, that I'm going to need to play with. A little bit more 70 30 as as is the usual vermilion river sort of uh, thing to be honest it's it's the aftertaste to me is is better than than the vape not that it's a bad vape because it's it's definitely pineapple um, but as i say i i, I think I, I would love to find a, a juice that is is if you like pure raw pineapple um and and as with most of the fruit fruit flavors they, they do tend to if you like mimic a a sort of a confectionery type flavor rather than hard and fast fruit um but the aftertaste is damn good hmm rather nice. I may well persevere with this one uh, and, and see how it goes. But that is the Vermilion River Hawaiian Pineapple, um, which to me is uh, is more uh, sugar coated cubey things, um, which is nice. And same sort of thing with the colas. I think some of the colas can be like that. Um, but I'm liking that one. I am liking that one a lot. Uh, back to DeMarco. Thank you very much, Mr. Dibley. 
Um, I do like the sound of that actually. Might be worth giving that a little bit of a punt uh, and uh, seeing what it's like, but uh, not on anything that's going to crack, I, I shouldn't imagine. Um, now, um, I'm going to run out of time. However, I've got this kind of second part of my vapor trail um, that I did on the way home, um, which I'm going to play in when I find it, because I've got the right one. I've got about three different versions of it. Um, so I'm going to go with the short one. Uh, and um, I was using a rather nice um, tobacco juice, which was a bit different for me. So um, have a look. Well, good afternoon. You uh, join me on my journey back south yet again from the, uh, the hills of Scotland. <laughs> and uh, if you see the little bits that uh, I put in from time to time, it's actually a really nice day today. It's very bright and blue skies with a few little clouds uh, and um, it is very nice indeed. And today I am uh, vaping on an XO juice that I purchased from Liberty Flights. Uh, and it is XO Virginia 18 milligram. It's a PG based uh, e juice. Um, and I've been using it for a couple of days this week, uh, and I was using it a bit last week. Put it on a, a cleaned out MT3 on the uh, Evic. Uh, and I had to make a special trip this morning because Wednesday I was in Kilmarnock and this was in my pocket. When I got to Glasgow on Wednesday night, it was not in my pocket. <laughs> it had fallen out and I, I'd left it at the office in Kilmarnock. So I had to go back there this morning after doing what I needed to do in Glasgow. Go back to Kilmarnock, pick it up and then start my journey south. So I'm actually a little bit later than I would normally have been. So there you go. So I've got me here, uh, I've got my juice and my device. I'd have got it back in a few weeks, but I didn't want to leave it really. Anyway, as I mentioned at the start, uh, I'm on this uh, rather nice XO Virginia juice that I got from Liberty Flights. Uh, and I have to say, it's probably for me one of the closest tobacco flavours that I've tried. It's got a really nice taste in the mouth and it's not unlike Virginia tobacco um, and it's not unlike Golden Virginia rolling tobacco either. Um, it's got quite a good throat hit and that's more than likely to do with the fact that it is PG as opposed to VG. Um, but I have, I have felt uh, a lot more uh, dehydrated, dry throated if you like, um, vaping this so I've been drinking a lot more water. Um, but it is, it's a rather pleasant tobacco vape. And as you know, I favour more of the sweety, chocolatey, nutty, yes, missed certain nutty flavours uh, than I do tobacco ones. But I thought for a change, I'd, uh, I'd have some tobacco. Uh, and it is rather nice. Hmm, very pleasant indeed. Um, I haven't caught up on the shows this week because I, uh, I drove up to Scotland on Wednesday morning having uh, checked the uploads from Tuesday night uh, and the hotels I stay at the Wi-Fi is not brilliant at all so I end up not being able to watch anything and have to catch up so I will be catching up on the shows um, from Wednesday and Thursday because I know 
Catherine Devlin was on VT Talk on Wednesday night. So I'm going to be interested to see uh, what was talked about on Wednesday uh, and what kind of malarkey Dave got up to on Thursday. <laughs> so I shall be watching the shows. I am already in the doghouse of being in Scotland um, for my wife's birthday, but I'm sure I'll make it up to her when we go shopping on Sunday. <laughs> yes, I was well and truly in the doghouse. Um, but there you go. Needs must and, uh, you know, we've got to all work and go to Scotland. <laughs> oh dear, I've gone over. But uh, there you go. I've now caught up on all the shows um, that I missed. Uh, and uh, is it a new thing? The chair dance? I don't know. Um, will Dave be doing a chair dance tomorrow night? Well, you'll have to tune in and find out because I know he's got some stuff to talk about uh, EU-wise. Uh, and I know that uh, Keith and uh, Daz will be in the house on Thursday for the Hayes Hour. Not quite sure what's going on on Saturday vis-a-vis -vis Mr Sutton. But if you check the Vapor Trails TV Facebook and Twitter feeds, you will find out, I am sure, if a show is going to be going ahead. Uh, Sunday, of course, Mr Kitson with uh, Dave's Tackle Box. I'm not exactly sure what is going out on Monday uh, in place of Tin Your Tip, because uh, I caught up with Tin Your Tip earlier on this afternoon. <laughs> Always playing catch up. Uh, and I will be back next Tuesday with uh, something. Let's see what happens. But I'll see you next week. Ta-ta. <laughs>